Hi guys, Rich D from Warlord Games, and today I'm joined by Rich C from Warlord Games, and we're here to take you through from box to battlefield of the Panzer III plastic kit. So there are a number of different options in the kit, Rich. Which are we going for with this build? Okay, well, we'll have a quick look at the back of the box in a moment, and you can see from that that we've got uh, a few choices. We can go from the Russian front through any theatre you choose, and uh, I've chosen the Panzer III L variant for the desert. Nice, okay. Uh, and what differentiates that from uh, the other different variants in the box? Well, the choices we've got uh, give you plenty of options. And before we, as we're getting into the box here, um, I'm going to go for the short barrel L42, uh, which in bolt action terms, I believe you've got the book to hand. Yep, that's a media anti tank gun. Uh, it also obviously features a couple of machine guns in there, a couple of MG34s as well, so lots of dice being thrown down during gameplay. And this one, as you can see on the decal sheet, comes with an option for the 21st Panzer Division, um, and later on we'll look at some other decals which include the Africa Corps detail. So the assembly instructions here, and um, this takes you through step by step, uh, nicely sort of pictured out in 3D as well. Um, so as long as you follow these nice and carefully, uh, you should not have any problems assembling. Uh, make sure, obviously, one of our big things we focus on is the idea of dry fitting. You'll see throughout the video, you'll see Rich uh, sort of assembling bits and pieces and taking them apart and uh, just dry fitting everything to make sure everything fits nice and snugly beforehand. So, as you're saying, there's plenty of detail on that diagram. Um, I always make sure I read and reread that and have a good look over the sprues, making sure I'm familiar with where the numbers actually are and what pieces are what. Uh, this sprue is very, very detailed uh, with lots of little extras, so it's very important to get in there and familiarise yourself with what's going on. Okay, so going to assembly now, uh, we're currently cutting out uh, all of the sections for one of the track sections. Uh, do you have any problems with this at all? It can be very fiddly. Um, the best thing to do, as you can see here, is dry fit, making sure you've got familiar with where the bits are going to go and really look for which bits come in contact with each other. Uh, because when we've got that in our head, we can put the glue where it's actually needed and not just everywhere. And speaking of the glue, we're using our painter plastic glue here. Um, there's yep. a little bit of playability with the glue. Once you put it on, it doesn't dry straight away. So you can say if you do, you know, dry fit beforehand. But if you do make any kind of small mistakes, you can sort of tweak and sort of uh, move the parts about a little bit once they are in place. That's absolutely right. Um, what the plastic glue is doing is melting both surfaces and forming a very tight weld uh, join. Um, you've got plenty of time to perhaps fiddle. What you don't want to do is have the glue everywhere because you will end up with string bits um, hanging around and that could uh, erase the detail. Now, if a look at the tracks themselves, uh, it's a good idea to build one unit at a time, focusing on the top half and the ends then when you've got those in place, let them dry for a little while before you glue on the bottom piece. Now this time I left off the exhaust detail work. Um, you can put it on, I just left it off because it's not. Some of the bits were small and fiddly and I didn't want to knock them off whilst adding the tracks. On to the top half. The top half, because the variant we're choosing is the Desert Variant EL, uh, there's quite a few little bits that need to be worked on. So I just took my time working through one piece, um, making sure it was in the right place, getting the glue in the right place before moving on to the next. You might want to spend a bit more time on this. Um, it's a good opportunity at this point to add some extra details. Um, also, if you've got a sharp knife to hand, uh, making sure you're cutting away from yourself 
trim off any little bits of sprue that are hanging around after the clippers. We've chosen the Panzer III L variant because it's got the L42 bow uh, short version, which was the 5th Light Division's tank, uh, some 75 turned up in the Desert War. Uh, they were later uh, to become the 21st Panzer Division under Rommel. Of course, you could do the variant with the L60 gun, which has a space armor, mm -hmm. and the long battle, which the British refer to as the Panzer III Special. So here we can see we've cut out all the different pieces to assemble the main gun assembly. Um, this was, I think, a little bit tricky. There's a little bit of time involved here, just making sure everything, again, dry fitting beforehand, uh, and then getting everything put together. Uh, any particular tips at this point? Well, it kind of depends on where you want to have your gun movable mm -hmm. or static. Uh, I.e., do you want to glue it in place so that it's fixed for any games, um, or do you want it movable so you can actually elevate it um, and have a nice display model as well? Um, I think with this one, because we were planning ahead and we were trying to work out whether we were going to use it in games in the future, mm -hmm. um, we've gone for a static version. Um, where we've actually glued it. Pay attention to the instructions and look absolutely carefully dry fit it to know exactly where the glue goes if you want it to elevate. In terms of glue, it often takes a lot less glue than you would think to assemble as well. Like we were saying earlier with the tracks, um, the more plastic you use, the more it tends to sort of blob out and kind of obscure details and things. So again, it's a case of just using a very thin, almost sort of like a trace of glue. Um, you'd be surprised how, how adhesive it really is. In fact, you'll probably find if you use too much, the whole piece goes soft, leaving fingerprints in it and a lot of stringy glue parts. So be practical on a small amount. Again here, just holding a piece just for a little while, a few seconds generally is enough, but on slightly larger pieces you may want to hold it for a minute. You could use an elastic band or uh, some kind of clips just to keep it in position and that way the glue's got plenty of time just to fully adhere and start that welding process. Again, when you finish the entire tank, you leave it overnight to make sure that all the parts are fully dry before you're really going to handle it properly when it comes to painting or even gaming. For this tank, it's not going to be a command tank, so for that purpose we've gone for the closed hatch. However, the kit does of course come with a tank commander on the sprues as well if you want to have it as a command vehicle. There's lots of small details which you could add at this point. But now we've got the three parts, uh, as per the instructions. We've let them dry overnight. We've come back ready to rebuild. Again, they fit really nicely together at this point. Just checking the fit. And again, it's not as simple as just running the glue around the edge, because some edges are exposed uh, where you think they might be touching. So have a good look around it. Familiarise yourself with where to put the glue and be sparing as it goes on. The total assembly time here was, I think, in the region of about 15 minutes, I think? Yeah, I think in total, because we did leave it overnight to dry, and you can total up to about 15 minutes for this variant. You probably want to take a little bit more time over other variants that have maybe the shirts and armour. Of course, you're not going to use the shirts until you're on the later variant of the M, which would have seen much more service on the Russian front. Uh, of course, the chassis got used for almost everything, and it was a very popular and uh, cost-effective piece of kit. And in fact, you'll probably see that more in the Stug variant, which we'll look at at another day. Okay, so now we're moving on to the painting section. So, we are big fans here at Warlord Games of the Army Painters Coloured Primers. Uh, here we've got the Bolt Action uh, British Uniform Brown, which we're using for the lower half of the tank. Uh, why is it we're using that for the lower half, Rich? Well, uh, when it comes to the painting, uh, you can get tones very easily. By putting the tank on the page here uh, upside down, I've used the dark brown as a base to give shadow. When it came to the main colour, which is the desert yellow, I've turned the track section up the right way and sprayed from above and sides so that you get the brown showing as a shadow inside the depths of the tracks and the light colour on the top surfaces. You don't need to worry about that with the turret because that's nearly all the desert yellow. Again, several very light, quick strokes is all you need. Now we're moving on to, we're putting the decals on now. We're putting them now on before the weathering to get a more natural look so the weathering goes over the top of them. It's a very, uh, it sounds quite obvious, but uh, it can be uh, sort of overseen by some. So any particular tips or tricks with decals here at all? Yeah, it's great to have uh, the water nice, uh, nice sort of tepid uh, tap water. Not cold, not hot, but just nice and tepid. And the decals then only need about 10 to 15 seconds dipped in the water 
to allow the decal to release from the backing sheet. I use a, a little dab of water on the brush just to slide them off the backing sheet onto the tank. Don't worry about where it goes because you can, as you can see here, just fiddle about a little until it's in the place you need it. Once it's there though, just use the edge of a bit of tissue to very gently dab out any water. You're not trying to press it hard, you're just literally letting the decal stick to the surface by taking away the water. And for this tank we've opted to use some of our additional decals that we sell in the store. So we've got, I think, three different sheets here. There was the Africa Core specific decals, there were, I think, the red turret numbers, and I think it was the Balkan Cross, the Balkan Kreutz uh, sheet, I believe. That's correct, yes. Uh, now I've gone for these little extra details because it's got to fit in with an army that we're working on. Um, and of course, the extra decal sheets uh, allow you to do specific armies. Just been going over it with a bit of varnish in this situation, just to seal it down and make sure it stays where it is. When you're doing the varnish, it helps blend the decal into the rest of the tank. And I've done this once uh, the decals have had a chance to dry off. And I'm also painting not just the decal area, but the plate of armour that the decal's on. That way you don't have any edges showing. When it comes to the placement of de uh, decals as well, um, there are there are no specific rules really. I mean, obviously, uh, the turret numbers go on the turret, but I mean, we've looked in research for this video, we've looked at uh, a bunch of different um, research material and source books, things like that, uh, and there's a lot of variation, so don't worry too much about getting everything exactly spot on. There were variants all over the place, uh, depending on where the uh, unit was fighting. So we're moving on to weathering here, and I've got a couple of different ways of doing this. Um, what I've used here is the uh, dry brush from Army Painter to use a uh, uni German uniform grey um, and quite simply using the bit of dry brushing technique where I'll wipe a bit of paint onto the uh, tissue paper to get rid of the excess. I then go over edges or places where paint would wear on the edges of the tank um, and that gives me a nice little uh, weathering effect. Another way you could do this is with uh, a bit of sponge from the blister packs. Now if you just dab that into the grey, maybe a corner of it, you can then also dab this and you get a little bit more of a speckled effect than dry brushing will give you. And um, this is great around uh, engine wear, where dust might hit the engine units or uh, the front of uh, the tank, mud guards, that type of area. Um, you could also use an uh, army painter stipple brush. This brush is very tough. It's uh, a uh, very solid bristles and again just by stabbing down the excess paint onto the tissue you can then dab against the actual model and get a very speckled effect. So a combination of all three or just pick one that you like to get the result that you're after. Yeah, don't forget to do your turrets at the same time. Uh, sometimes it can be helpful once you've done some of this uh, work on both parts. Put the two together and then have a look around the model to see if there's anything that's glaringly obvious that you've missed. Um, obviously you, you might do nice bits of wear and tear leading up to the edge of the turret and then the turret's nice and clean, it might not look correct. And the key here really is to, to take a lot of paint off of the brush. You really don't want much paint on your brush at all at this point. Um, and again, you'll see here that we essentially we go over pretty much the majority of the bodywork altogether, to be honest. Um, so it's taking off an awful lot of the paint uh, and then just going over and if you need a bit more paint you add a little bit more. It's better to use too little than too much at this point. Okay, what I'm going to do now is use the uh, original large brush and go around any areas like uh, wheel trims that required that darker tone. Somewhere that would have had uh, rubber on the wheel thing um, they would have bleached uh, grey rather than black. Um, so by using that to round those areas, and then I can move on to um, like the, the detail on the wheels, on the top surface, or any equipment. By using plate mail metal, uh, I can go round any tracks. Now, it's going to look very shiny, it's going to look a bit odd at this point, but we've got another little technique which is fantastic from Army Painter that speeds the whole process up. Now bearing in mind at this point, it's only taking me maybe 10 minutes tops to get to the dip stage. Mm -hmm. Now but this is going to get on the gaming table really quick. Yeah, the focus here really is to, to get it onto the battlefield as soon as we can. Now a great technique uh, when you're doing something for an army is to grab your whole platoon. 
do all three tanks or five tanks as one batch. Exactly, and that's exactly what the armor painting system is sort of designed for. The, the colour primers save so much time, uh, and again, you'll see later the different technique again save so much time, and it's so effective uh, and such a great uh, tool for tabletop painters. Okay, this is the magic. So you've got one very basically painted tank and very silver tracks everywhere. Not to worry, we're going to get the biggest brush we can get our hands on. Tank brush. Load up the brush. We're not dipping the whole metal part in, we're just dipping half the bristles in. Now I could just go and dip the entire turret inside, but then I'd end up with a turret full of ink. So rather than dipping it, I'm using a field brush and just spreading it liberally all over. And it is very liberal. Uh, when you first put this on, I was a little bit scared. Um, but the trick is to, to coat it liberally to make sure it gets everywhere onto the turrets and then just wipe off the excess. So you'll see here for quite a while, we are just taking off any excess on the flat panels so that it doesn't pull up and create any uh, undesired sort of streak effects. Absolutely. What you'll find is the brush, when it's loaded, you'll get most of the ink out of the brush, the paint out of the brush, onto the model. And your brush, being fairly empty, you can then use to soak up the paint from any puddles that are forming on the actual model surface. You might want to leave it just for a minute just to see where those puddles develop and then brush them around a bit, spread them around a bit more. But the idea is to some degree to allow the ink to puddle and create shades and depth to the tank. The dipping technique, particularly for vehicles, it sort of serves many different purposes. So, as you say, it sort of settles into the recesses and the cracks and has sort of definition. Um, it also, with the strong tone, it adds a slight brown um, pigment to the vehicle as well. So again, it adds sort of a weathered effect as well. Um, also, with the as it sort of settles as well, you can get, uh, as we said, sort of slight streaking effects, which can be quite desirable if you sort of toy around and take off any excess where you don't want it. Um, but also sort of tease the um, the pooling effect into sort of oil streaks and things like that as well. So there are many different be uh, benefits. Uh, it saves a massive amount of time that would be spent sort of highlighting and shading different areas. Um, but again, we spent uh, maybe five minutes well, This took minutes me five so. minutes, yeah. yeah. You can see on the tissue paper underneath that I've used, we're not even getting flicks from it. It's not splatting off everywhere. Um, and I've only really laid the tissue down to uh, make it easier for me to soak any excess off of the brush if I needed to. Um, of course, as we go around, we're just checking for pooling adding a little extra here and there so I'm not dipping the brush right in I'm just getting a bit of ink on the very tips and then spreading it around where I want it. And again once it goes on it does go on a little dark it can be a little bit da daunting that you've covered it mm. in, in a bit of a brown coat um, but it does lighten up and I say it does settle uh, as it sets as well. Yeah you, you'll notice it looks very shiny and that was very scary. Having a very shiny tank wasn't what I wanted um, and we'll come to something very shortly that uh, I'll help sort that out but be brave, have a go, spread the ink around and make sure it gets into every nook and cranny. But take some of the excess away if you feel like you want to. You can always go back and put a second layer on. When you finish this technique, it is best to leave it for a good 12 to 24 hours. But you'll find when it's dry, it is very, very shiny. The quickest and easiest solution before you do anything else is to grab a can of your anti shine matte varnish from Army Painter and give it a blast with that. You only need two or three light passes. All I'm grabbing here is the skeleton bone. It's a fantastic desert colour, dust is what we're after and it will make the tank look a little bit more bleached. So we've got a nice flat tone of colour on the tank from the varnish. I'm taking a bit of paint onto that brush, wiping it off almost entirely onto the tissue and then just on the raised surfaces anywhere where the sun would beat down on it where the dust might collect um, edges and flat areas just putting a little bit of a brushwork on there just to lighten the surface and that alongside the ink that we did earlier is all you need to create depth from the British Uniform Brown Spray originally through to the highest light colour on the top edges and of course it's dust it's going over the top of the decals it's going over the top of the other grey weathering that warm surface look and it blends all the paint work together remember what we're doing here is actually building uh, a tank quickly for some games that we've got coming up I didn't want to spend much time and when I've got 10 to paint I don't want to be spending all year painting each of them 
So you can go to an extreme degree of painting. These, we've gone for a quick, nice and easy starter point where anybody can just pick up those brushes, get onto this gaming table, and in total this probably took me about 30 minutes. Okay, so you've seen it from start to finish. In total, we are only taking maybe half an hour to build this tank. The final result, I think you'll agree, nice and simple, certainly enough to get onto the table for your first battles. So get out there, get painting, pick up that army painter.